In our Sunrise Smart Start, we continue to follow that breaking news. A desperate search underway right now in Baltimore, Maryland. Just unimaginable scenes. Around 1.30, a large ship ran into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, which collapsed. This is a live view from the crews there, just down from the Beltway. But some of the images and video we've seen, you just can't even imagine it. Multiple vehicles fell into the water after the vessel ran into the bridge. It also went up in flames and started to sink. We just brought you here at Sunrise, the live press conference from authorities there as you're looking at the video from this morning that ship ran into the bridge. Two people rescued, one has serious injuries, and they're still, still searching for at least seven victims believed to be in the water right now. Again, that's five hours later. Reuters reports the ship's owner, Synergy Marine Group, says the cause of the crash is unknown, but all crew members have been accounted for. They are still on the ship. No injuries for them. The bridge is massive. It opened in 1977. It carries a busy stretch of ice. 695 over a river southeast of the city. Breaking here in Rochester, police this morning announced they've made an arrest in a recent murder. Police tell us 31-year-old Christopher McRae Jr. was taken into custody just yesterday. He is accused of killing 31-year-old Julius June on Hudson Avenue. That was on the 16th of this month. He's facing murder and weapons charges. He'll be around arraigned downtown at 9:30. We're to Syracuse now, where police say they are searching for the body of a kindergartner. They say five-year-old Nefertiti Harris was beaten to death by her mother, 29-year-old Latasha Mott. Mott was arraigned as police continue searching for that child's body. According to court documents, Mott hit Nefertiti multiple times while in the shower, that beating happening in January, according to police. Mott is charged with first-degree manslaughter and concealment of a corpse. She's currently being held with no bail set. Mott is accused of trying to hide the body of her daughter in order to keep evidence from law enforcement. 14-year-old Zoe Hotling from Brighton, who disappeared Sunday night. She is back home and safe. That news comes as the girl's friends and coaches she cheers with had a candlelight vigil for her. The 14-year-old has autism. She's part of the cheer abilities team, and everyone there was holding on to one another, sharing how great they think that teen is. She is a lovely person to be around. She's always positive and always has something nice to say. She's always nice to her friends on her team, and watching her perform is one of the highlights of my competition days. Ryan police do say they will have an update on this investigation today. We will share that with you as we have them on air at noon and online at rochesterfirst.com. A Rochester woman has admitted to defrauding the IRS and New York State out of more than $100,000 each. The U.S. Attorney's Office says between the summers of 2020 and 2021, 55-year-old Melanie Armstrong falsely applied for unemployment benefits by using the identities of others, claiming she had no source of income. From 2019 to 2023, Armstrong filed 19 false federal income tax returns for herself, along with family and other associates, inflating their wages. Armstrong also filed filed 17 ta state tax returns, similarly inflated, and she now faces years behind bars and a million dollar fine. The mayor of the village of Avon is giving us some new insight as to why they suspended police chief Joseph Gear without pay last week. The mayor said that decision came after a presentation of evidence from the FBI. He wouldn't elaborate on what that is. News 8 did previously tell you the state controller's office was looking into scheduling and bookkeeping problems with the police department. In response to the lack of specifics, we heard from one town councilman accusing the village government of trying to cover up and hide a scandal, hoping it all goes away. Your sunrise Nice traffic here at 652. 590 is good, 490 and 390 as well. You see the live view there from the west side. No accidents on the main expressways, but over by the Baytown Walmart and Wegmans, there's a crash at Empire Boulevard and Terrell Drive. Just a busy stretch there. We'll check your morning commute again in about 30 minutes. Counting down to April 8th, we are not the only ones getting ready for the total solar eclipse. Local law enforcement has a major job to do as well. Trying to address some of those yep. major concerns for the day, including hours long traffic, possible issues with cell service, and business closures. Now, they do recommend if you are headed out the day of, the Monroe County Sheriff's Office says it's better to plan ahead, leave early, and they say that they are certainly going to be all hands on deck for the eclipse. We're going to have extra deputies out on patrol so that we don't lose that response time that we have right now. Again, a heart attack doesn't care if it's the eclipse. Right? Natural causes are going to happen, illnesses, accidents, things are going to still happen. Um, and we need to get to those people through that influx of traffic and people. So 
we're going to have some extra deputies out there just to try to respond faster. News 8 also taking an inside look at the command center, which officials tell us will have several teams positioned together monitoring various aspects when it comes to real-time traffic and other necessary responses. March Madness continues now. More teams getting eliminated. The Orange women's team came in as 19-point underdogs against UConn. The Huskies in the second round of the tournament. Ed Tech grad Daisha Fair did all she could to keep the Orange dancing, though they came up short. She had them within four in the third quarter. Fair finished with a team-high 20 points. By the way, reached third all-time on the women's scoring list with 3,403 total points. And even after the 72-64 to 64 loss, she leaves Cuse as an inspiration. Me being 5'5", five five and everyone has what they have to say about that because I'm that small. I've done a lot at this size, so I think that I've shown teammates for the last five years that they can do anything. News 8, your local election headquarters as early voting continues this morning and runs through Saturday. The primary is a week from today. Nearly 1,800 voters across Monroe County have already cast those ballots, while analysts say this primary has faced many roadblocks, adding most people are unaware it's even happening. So that's why we're here to remind you that primary is a week from today. The Powerball jackpot rolling over again this morning. Nobody hit that $813 million win. That's why we're here at yeah. work. One person in New York did win a million dollars, matched five of the numbers, so be sure to check your ticket. The numbers on your screen, 7, 11, 19, 53, 68, 23. The power play multiplier of two. The next drawing is Wednesday, and that jackpot goes up again, now at about $865 million. Yeah, but before that even, you can play Mega Millions, rather Mega Billions, right now with this jackpot as the drawing for the $1.1 billion jackpot is tonight at 11. Remember, always play responsibly. Yeah, it doesn't sound like any of the uh, office pools or <laughs> yeah. newsroom pools did well yesterday. Yeah, our consolation prize, a beautiful sunrise here over yeah. the lake this oh, morning, James, gorgeous. and mild out to enjoy it. Priceless. Uh, don't have to pay a dime to see this <laughs> gem overhead. Absolutely gorgeous out there. You love to see it. Haven't had one of these in a while. Yesterday was all blue. You can't get this kind of color when you have all blue. So we will take the clouds this morning. Numbers getting to about 60 later today. Yes, a couple of sprinkles tonight. And then we slowly see the temperatures drop over the next few days heading into the weekend. But I mean, just 40 is not bad at all for the yeah. holiday. Thank yeah. you, James. And thank you for watching us here for News 8 at Sunrise. We'll see you back here in 30. And remember, CBS Mornings is coming up next. Have a great day. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.